has made no secret of his antagonism towards the United States. But when the president announced what he called military and economic separation from the U.S. and a realignment with China and Russia, even his cabinet seemed to be taken by surprise. Has the China pivot gone too far? And what does this mean for our economy and the country at large? Good evening. I'm Tony Abad, and this is Political Capital. With us tonight, former Economic Planning Secretary and now Senior Advisor to Regina Capital, Romulo Neri, former National Security Advisor and now Congressman Royal Wallace, and Magdalo Partilist Congressman Gary Alejandro. Welcome, gentlemen. Good evening, and thank you for joining us in the university. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have a uh, hot issue. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Romy. Uh, I know you're wearing, I know you always wear different hats. We've been, we've been working together a long time, largely in the area of political economy, which probably also boils down to it. But also, at the same time, a financial advisor, also an economic advisor. We have those different hats. Uh, what are your thoughts on this China pivot or, you know, so called verbal diarrhea or these hot statements? Congressman, you were with the Marines before. Before, yes. Yes. So you're both military men. I mean, one is your own point of view, and also the military man's point of view on this whole issue of you know, pivoting, all these you know, shocking statements that come out of the president. Yeah, at Annapolis, uh, we emphasized uh, a lot uh, on international relations. You know, the US Navy had the global reach. Yes. So there in the Naval Academy, International relations is very important as a course for future naval leaders. Uh, more than the army, more than the air force, because uh, the navy was the major uh, projector of power. That's why we really emphasize that. And you know, in international relations, uh, words can become very important. That's why uh, diplomacy is a very careful uh, uh, art. You have to select uh, words uh, very properly. And uh, it this can translate into policy. Yeah, it, it can translate into policy. Like, uh, for example, you say when you say, I am disturbed, I am, uh, you know, it, it could mean uh, something in diplomacy. And they st the White House starting to use the word, uh, it's very disturbing. In okay. other words, it may be affecting them uh, already, although initially they, they seem to be. Ignoring it. Right. So when, when, when the White House comes up with a statement, it's a very well thought out and crafted statement. So each word actually yeah. has a value. Yeah, the press secretary was uh, interviewed uh, in the White House, among other subjects, and they asked about this, uh, what's happening here. So, but if you ask me about the, the separation and then the, the people, there's nothing wrong with an economic people. I think we should do that. We should maximize the economic relationship, the trade, uh, it will benefit us, it will benefit uh, China and the region and the entire world. I'm a little concerned about the, the possible, although this was denied, yes. the possible uh, alliance uh, pivot. Uh, because you know, when you shift alliance, it must be triggered by something really very important. You know, if, uh, if there's a uh, big reason, there must be a big reason other than something, let's say, uh, personal, like uh, for example, if one party has become unreliable, mm -hmm. it has reneged on a particular alliance obligation, or the alliance is starting to crumble, it, it will be a reason. And now, uh, I cannot imagine, for example, the Philippines uh, joining an orbit uh, consisting of countries like North Korea, Cambodia, Laos, as against what we have now, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're with the United States, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, 
to a certain extent, Great Britain, even India. I, I feel more comfortable in that grouping. Okay. And Congressman, what is your, I guess, I'm also asking, let's say, as a soldier, no? what, what's your point of view on this, um, uh, I guess, dynamics, the shift that's happening? Well, we're, we're used to uh, President saying something that uh, we consider as a policy, because we believe that anything that goes out of the mouth of the president is a policy pronouncement. And now that you have a confused uh, statement, or conflicting statements from the president, it also confuses the military, especially a shifting from uh, the United States to China. Now, uh, when I was still in the Marine Corps, uh, I did so many exercises with uh, the and that uh, we're doing that in order to harmonize our strategy and our doctrine, uh, in order to, uh, for us uh, to be uh, compatible in what we're doing. And uh, considering the fact that, that in the last couple of years ago, uh, even last year, we considered China as uh, the top of the list of the uh, threats to national okay. security. Yeah. Yeah. the other hand. And okay. now it is as if that we're replacing that with the United States as we, as the president is becoming aggressive uh, against uh, the United States. Would you also agree with Congressman Gold as a sort of get more comfort out of being in this orbit of uh, the United States and Western powers? Yes, I agree. Uh, considering the fact that uh, our armed forces have been training with the United States forces and uh, we are so emotional, sentimental uh, on the issue of China grabbing our islands. Uh, it raises so much emotion. Issue. Yeah, emotion, not only for our Filipinos, but for our soldiers. They were there in Spratly, they were there in uh, uh, our Sierra Madre ship. And we know that we're doing this in spite of our uh, lack of capabilities. We're doing that in defense of our country. Uh, Romy, do you think? It's really going to matter, I mean, as far as economic relations with the U.S., um, you know, the whole alliance. Uh, and I guess you're talking about the threat being actually China, and then you end up going to the, the very place that is threatening us in terms of our, our uh, the territorial integrity of our economic uh, zone. But, uh, but I don't know if maybe, maybe as you said, again, are we being too uh, over, uh, over active with this, with this issue? Our economic relations is with the U.S. Uh, that's to do. I don't think it's something that whatever presidential pronouncements are made yes. will uh, upset too much. Of course, there is a usual international disturbance. Uh, of course, it generates uncertainty. But as I said, uh, we may be over that. But I think to be fair to the president also, I suspect he's practicing some art of intention here. Because for a very long time, the U.S. has taken us for granted. In fact, I would agree with you that they have mistreated us militarily. Our alliance was treated as a big compartment. And uh, if the U.S. were just to give us even 5 to 10 percent of what the support they're giving Israel, we'd be much, much better off militarily. And I don't think we would be bullied by our neighbors. Yeah. Unfortunately, the U.S. has not given us that much support. the same way that other U.S. allies have benefited. What do you think about that? Well, the, the mutual defense treaty does not provide for a transfer of equipment. It doesn't provide for the U.S. giving us a lot of equipment. But, uh, but I'd like to talk about history. During the time when there were military bases here, uh, before 1991, especially in the 50s and 60s and even in the 70s, the Philippines, uh, the Philippine military was among the best in this part of the world, in, the, in, the, in Southeast Asia. In fact, uh, during the 50s and even in the 60s, we were hosting air shows. Uh, and uh, in the 50s, we had Sabre jets already during the time when it was the, maybe the second best uh, fighter plane in the world at uh, that time. Uh, right after the Second World War, we had uh, already the, uh, the much vaunted uh, Mustang uh, fighters, when Mustang fighters at that time were almost uh, top of the line. We, we were given a destroyer escort in 1961, 
And uh, in 1969, you'll be surprised, I can show you a copy of a, a newspaper, Straight, uh, Straight Times of Malaysia. Malaysia accused us of bullying them. Imagine that, 1969, because we sent two F5s uh, to bus uh, one of their uh, uh, naval ships in the Sabah area. We were the bully uh, yeah, we're, we're during the time. Yeah. yeah, because uh, we were well equipped uh, during that time, but somewhere along the way, our uh, military deteriorated. And talking of Israel, I think we should be happy that we're not in the situation of Israel. The reason why Israel is getting so much support is that they're in a war zone. You know, that place has been continuously a war zone uh, since the Israel was uh, created. So the U.S. had to prop them up. Otherwise, uh, Israel would be disappear would, would disappear from the map. U.S. is supporting Egypt also to, to sort of uh, rein in Egypt and prevent Egypt from getting into the picture. Because remember, during uh, the Middle East War, Egypt was uh, part of the United Arab uh, Republic against Israel. But now, Egypt is much friendlier. Uh, people are talking about the support given to Pakistan. And again, the reason for that is that uh, Pakistan was very important in the war against the Taliban. Again, war zone. So in the case of the Philippines, we should be happy. But if this were a war zone, and God forbid uh, uh, it should not happen, we'd be, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of support uh, from the US because we're very important in the balance of power. No, uh, I was thinking, maybe China might give us better treatment than what you know, the US is That's being given. What do you think of that state? Well, I, I agree with Secretary Collins. Uh, we are situated differently as does with Israel, Egypt, and other countries. And uh, at the end of the day, the defense of our country is our responsibility. It's not the responsibility of other countries. And now, uh, the state of our armed forces will depend on the state of our economy. So the moment we, we grow our economy, we will have the, the uh, buying capacity to improve our armed forces. And that uh, if we have to put ourselves uh, in the shoes of other countries like the United States, they have their own national interest to serve. Uh, China definitely has their own uh, national interest to serve. We have our own national interest to serve. And at the end of the day, uh, whether we're talking about independent foreign policy, as long as we serve our own national interest, that is independent foreign policy. And I believe that we open more uh, doors Whether we were stronger before and deteriorated, it's really something that's on, on our part. Because uh, are we allies or not? We were supposed to be the people of American policy with the foundation. Yes. And we've been allies ever since we can remember. And yet, how do they treat allies? We're the most you know, antiquated equipment in the world. And I think there's a lot of uh, rusty equipment there in the US that we can probably use and we can update and we can fix. It seems to be always seems to be getting nowadays but we don't even mind plastic equipment because we can fix it. Filipinos are very good at fixing plastic equipment. They don't even spare us. So the, the, the US Navy in uh, the 90s and even after that were offering the fast brigade, the guided missile fast brigade, the Perry class. Uh, Taiwan got about five or six. In our case, we, the, we declined because uh, our reason was the operating expenses were a little too much. Maybe the, the, there are budgetary constraints. So they selected this uh, old, uh, the former uh, uh, cutters, Coast Guard uh, cutters, I think maybe for operational reasons. But we had that opportunity to get uh, a, a good uh, uh, excess defense article from the US Navy. And that would have been uh, a, a very good uh, system uh, yeah. for the Philippine Navy. Now, the other possibility is, the question is, are we going to, I think the president talked about us buying uh, equipment from both China and, yes, uh, and, and, and Russia. Yeah. China, China would be a big uh, no-no for as long as they are claiming uh, part of our exclusive economic zone. And also, even I, I, I think I doubt whether China would uh, sell us lethal uh, web equipment, knowing that maybe trucks, maybe because might knowing be that maybe in about yes. after six years uh, it might be a different political situation and we will turn around 
factors made in China lethal weapons.